Hi, today let us see drugs with alternative names. We have different types of drugs in our medical world. Whether all the drugs are having unique names? Not all the drugs, but few of the drugs are also indicated by alternative names. Here, alternative name is not the chemical name. It is the another name for the drug which is going to be popular and widely used. For example, if you take the case of aspirin, aspirin is called as acetyl salicylic acid. Similarly, isoniazid, isoniazid is called as isonicotinyl hydrazine. These two are not the alternative names. These are the chemical names because aspirin can be considered as a acetyl salicylic acid and isoniazid can be as an isonicotinyl hydrazine. Because of their simplicity in their chemical structure, they can be called by their chemical names. But what is the alternative name? For example, if you take the adrenaline, adrenaline can be considered as epinephrine. So epinephrine is the alternative name for the adrenaline. Now in this video, let us see what are the different types of alternative names for few of the drugs. All the drugs may not have the alternative names, but few of the drugs will have an alternative names, which is more popular or both of the names may be widely distributed and accepted. So we will see such type of drugs and what are the possible alternative names for the drugs. So let us start one by one. So the first one is the gliburide. Gliburide is having the structure like this and we can observe the one of the important uh, functional group that is it is the sulfonyl urea derivative. And gliburide is a second generation sulfonyl urea and this drug can also be called as glybanclamide. So here gliburide as well as glybanclamide are both are same and they represent the same structure and this drug is a second generation sulfonyl urea that acts by release of the insulin from the beta cells. This drug is going to inhibit the potassium channels at the beta cells which produce the depolarization of the beta cells leading to release of the insulin. Second one is a paracetamol. Paracetamol is one of the widely known uh, drug which is used as an analgesic as well as antipyretic. And what is the structure of paracetamol? It is again having the simple structure and in this structure we can observe the one of the function group that is the acetamide. Otherwise we can also call acetyl amino group. This acetyl amino group is attached to the para portion to the phenol ring system. So we can consider the paracetamol as para plus acetyl amino plus phenol. So that is a para acetyl amino phenol. So from this paracetamol name is going to be taken. From the para it is going to be taken para and acetyl amino the term acetam is going to be taken and from the phenol wall is going to be taken. So that is the paracetamol. So paracetamol is nothing but para acetyl amino phenol. But nowadays paracetamol is considered as acetaminophen. So again here acetamino is taken from the acetyl amino group as well as from the phenol the phen is going to be taken. Now it is acetyl amino phenol derivative that is nothing but the acetaminophen. So paracetamol is considered as acetaminophen which is an analgesic and antipyretic. Third one is the salbutamol. Salbutamol is having the structure like this and we can observe that it is having some structural similarity with the catecholamines. And this drug can be considered with an alternative name, albuterol. So salbutamol is also called as albuterol. And this drug is acting like a beta-2 agonist. Beta-2 receptors are abundant in the bronchial smooth muscle. So when this drug is going to be given, it produces a relaxation so that this drug acts as a bronchodilator. So salbutamol is one of the drug which is used in the treatment of asthma as well as other respiratory disorders like the COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder. Fourth one is the adrenaline. Already we have seen one of the examples. So this is the structure of adrenaline which is a catecholamine and this is the structure of endocatecholamine which is nothing but the noradrenaline. In the noradrenaline methyl group is not there on the amine group. Now adrenaline is considered as epinephrine. Similarly noradrenaline is considered as norepinephrine. The terminology is now changed and now in the literature we mainly use the terms like epinephrine and norepinephrine. Both epinephrine as well as norepinephrine are the important chemical mediators in the sympathetic system. And these two can also be used as drugs particularly epinephrine can be used in the anaphylactic shock 
and norepinephrine can also be used to produce the hypertension in some of the hypotensive conditions. And fifth one is the isoprenaline. What is the structure of isoprenaline? So this is the structure of isoprenaline. Again, we can observe this is the similar to the catecholamines, but it is not a natural catecholamine. It is a synthetic catecholamine. What is the group that is going to be substituted on the nitrogen of the amine? So here it is having the isopropyl substitution. So now isoprenaline is a structural analog of the adrenaline with an isopropyl group. So isoprenaline can be considered as isopropyl analog of the adrenaline. So from this we can take the name isoprenaline. And isoprenaline can also be called as isoproterenol. And this drug just acts like a catecholamine but because of the bulky group on the amine it is more selective for the beta receptors. Sixth one is the saxamethonium. This is the structure of saxamethonium and in this structure we can observe the nitrogen is attached as a quaternary ammonium group. So because of this quaternary ammonium group the suffix onium is going to be used and we can observe the two quaternary ammonium groups on the both of the terminals. And in between, we can observe a dicarboxylate ester. What is that? So this is the 1, 2, 3 and 4. So it is having the 4 carbon dicarboxylate. So this is nothing but the succinate derivative. And within this quaternary group, the nitrogen is attached with the simple alkyl groups like the methyl group. So by combining all these, we can get the name of the saxamethonium. So saxamethonium is obtained like it is coming from the succinate. So saxa plus methyl plus onium that is the saxamethonium it's a succinate derivative with methyl quaternary ammonium group and in this structure we can also observe this uh, group so this group is nothing but the choline moiety so now this choline moiety is present on both of the sides which is attached to the succinyl group so this drug can be called as succinyl choline the alternative name for the saxamethonium is the succinyl choline Saxamethonium is a depolarizing neuromuscular blocker which is going to produce the muscle paralysis by persistent depolarization. Seventh one is the methotrexate. Methotrexate is having a large structure like this but this structure is somewhat similar to the folic acid. And here the one of the important ring system it is having is the pteridine ring system. This pteridine ring system is attached by the methyl group to the remaining structure so this drug is called as methotrexate and this methotrexate can also be called with another name emetoterin. So here this is having the pteridine ring system attached by methyl group so it is called as emetoterin. So methotrexate is one of an antifolate agent which inhibits the dihydrofolate reductase enzyme thereby inhibits the conversion of the folic acid into tetrahydrofolate. And eighth one is the cytarabine. Cytarabine is a simple anti-metabolite and this is the structure of the cytarabine and here we can observe one of the nucleic acid here. This is the cytosine. Cytosine is a pyrimidine analog. And this pyrimidine is going to be attached with a sugar moiety that is the arabinose. Cytarabine is nothing but the cytosine arabinoside. So it is one of the drug which is having a nucleic acid attached with the sugar moiety. So that is the cytosine arabinoside. This cytosine arabinoside can also be called with another name ERASI. So ERASI is the alternative name for the cytarabine. And cytarabine is one of the drug which is acting like an anti-metabolite and it can be converted to cytarabine triphosphate which is then going to inhibit the DNA polymerase enzyme. Ninth one is the pethidine. Pethidine is having the ring system like this and what is the group in the pethidine? We can observe that it is having a piperidine ring system which is attached with the methyl. So what are the ring is the methyl piperidine. Actually pethidine is in one of a opioid derivative which is having the phenyl piperidine ring system. You can observe that the piperidine is attached with the phenyl ring so it is a phenyl piperidine derivative. And because this drug is having the methyl piperidine group so this drug can also be called as uh, meperidine. So meperidine is derived from the methyl piperidine. So from the methyl ME and from piperidine peridine. So it is a meperidine. So meperidine is a methyl piperidine derivative belonging to the chemical class of phenyl piperidines. Tenth one is the physostigmine. 
physostigmine is having the ring structure like this and we can observe that it is having the indole ring system which is attached with the pyrazole so it is also called as a pyrazolo indole ring system so physostigmine is a natural product having the pyrazolo indole ring system and this drug can also be called as eserin this eserin is having the methyl carbamate moiety which is responsible for its action on the acetylcholinesterase so physostigmine acts as a medium acting acetylcholinesterase inhibitor this drug is going to bind to the serin site of the acetylcholinesterase enzyme and it makes the carbamylation physostigmine is one of the drug which is used in the treatment of glaucoma because it is going to increase the acetylcholine levels within the eye 11th one is the sirolimus sirolimus is one of an immunosuppressant which is going to inhibit the t cell proliferation as well as activation t cells are very important for the stimulation of the immunity and once the t cells are going to be stimulated they can further stimulate the b cells which release the antibodies so here the stimulation of t cell is mediated by so many mediators and among them il2 is one of the important mediator so il2 mediated t cell proliferation and activation is going to be blocked by sirolimus the sirolimus is alternatively called with another name rapamycin so rapamycin is one of the drug which is used as an immunosuppressant which can be used to suppress the immunity in the organ transplantation 12th one is the vincristin vincristin is again one of the natural alkaloid coming from the vinca plant and this vincristin is going to inhibit the microtubule formation from the beta tubules beta tubules are polymerized into microtubules which are responsible for the the mitotic division so vincristin is going to block this uh, conversion and it acts as a spindle poison and vincristin is having one of the important use in the lymphocytic leukemia so it is used as an anti cancer agent because of the anti cancer activity the vincristin is also called as oncovin onco indicates which is related to the cancer chemotherapy and vin indicates it is a vinca alkaloid so it is a so oncovin is nothing but the alternative name for the vincristin 13th one is the doxorubicin doxorubicin is one of an anthracycline antibiotic this drug is going to inhibit the top isomerase 2 action top isomerase 2 is responsible for the relieving of the topological strain in the dna so that dna replication can be proceeded so doxorubicin can inhibit this top isomerase 2 so that it can inhibit the dna replication as well as doxorubicin can directly act on the dna and it can produce some free radicals which produce the dna strand breakage so doxorubicin is one of an important anthracycline antibiotic which inhibits the dna replication as well as produce the dna damage and within the name we can observe the doxo that means having some hydroxy group at the 14th position compared with its analog donorubicin so doxorubicin is nothing but the hydroxy donorubicin so the alternative name for the doxorubicin is the hydroxy donorubicin donorubicin is an another anthracycline antibiotic and when it is having the 14th position hydroxy group it is then called as doxorubicin and 14th one is the hyoscine hyoscine is again one of a natural alkaloid coming from the tropen plants and this is having the structure like this and is having one of a bicyclic ring system what is the name of this bicyclic ring system this bicyclic ring system is called as tropen ring so that's why it is coming from the tropen alkaloids and this tropen ring is having further attached with an epoxide bridge at the 6th and 7th position and hyoscine can also be called as scopolamine scopolamine is one of the alternative name for the hyoscine what is use of hyoscine hyoscine is used in the treatment of motion sickness this drug can inhibit the nausea and vomiting so it can be used in the treatment of motion sickness motion sickness is a condition where because of the movement a feeling of nausea and vomiting can be observed in the patient so in such situations it can inhibit the nausea and vomiting so hyoscine is used as an antiemetic in the treatment of motion sickness so in this way we have seen the 14 types of drugs with alternative names and at many of the drugs both the original name as well as alternative name are well established and well utilized so it is very important for us to learn the alternative names of the drugs so that we can easily identify which type of drug it is 
So here we have seen the 14 types of drugs like gliburide can be called as glibenclamide, paracetamol can be called as estemnophen, salbutamol can be called as albuterol, isoprenaline can be called as isoproterenol, adrenaline can be called as epinephrine, noradrenaline can be called as norepinephrine, saxamethonium can be called as saxenalcholine, methotrexate can be called as emethoterine, cytarabine can be called as arasi, pethidine can be called as meperidine, physostigmine as eserine, sirolimus as rapamycin, vincristine as oncovin, doxorubicin as hydroxydonorubicin and hyosin as scopolamine. So these are the 14 examples of the drugs having alternative names and this list can be further increased within the future by adding alternative names for the many of the drugs. And I hope this video is useful and if you like this video please share and post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching.